Hello. My name is Baron of Anarchy, and I was stalked by a gay ninja. No, this is a real story. This literally happened to me. And I should reiterate, when I mean stalked, I don't really mean stalked. I mean, like, you know, I was followed, I was accosted a little bit by a gay ninja. And that is the title of this story. And this is the story that I've had for many, many years, and I tell it to people, and they don't believe me. But I'm not making this shit up. This literally happened. And it happened literally a day before my 17th birthday. So happy birthday to me. Let's get into the story. Now, this is late 2006. My birthday is literally the next day. And I'm kind of like, you know, sad because it's like, I'm growing older. I'm in my last year of high school. And I don't know what to do with my life. And I'm getting worried. Oh, I'm going to grow old. And you know, what, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? I'd like to throw in a fun fact that these two games that I'm playing, Mortal Kombat, Armageddon, and Shinobi 3, they're two games that I received on my 17th birthday. Well, Shinobi 3 was part of a compilation, but these are the games that I played around that time. I'm actually having my own little midlife crisis at the age of 16 going on 17. And when you look back at things like that as an adult, it's kind of silly because you have nothing to worry about. You're young. Life is just practically almost getting started for you. I wish I could go back being 17 again, 18, because those were cool times, but whatever. We all grow old, yada yada. So anyways, I'm not in a particularly good mood. I'm an edgy teenager. I'm like, fuck the world, fuck school, fuck life, fuck my house, you know, whatever. So the thing is, is that I had eighth period lunch that semester. It was the first semester of senior year of high school. So what that means is that, you know, my lunch period is at the last, you know, it's the last period. But I don't go to lunch. I don't care particularly much for eating lunch. School cafeteria crap is garbage. Like literally prisoners in Rikers Island get better food than the kids in the public schools in New York City. So I'm just going to go home. I'm just gonna grab a pizza because I live right next to a pizzeria. I just go home, so I go home earlier than the other kids. I go home after seventh period. So that's what I do. I go home, I decide to take the subway because it's faster. So I go take the subway and I'm in this car and I'm standing in this car and I'm right next to this kid. And for some reason he strikes me as you know a little off and the reason why is because he's wearing one of those masks that go over your head and you know they have your eyes they have the eye cut out you know i don't know what they call those masks and i'm not gonna look it up i'm not gonna stop the video to look it up it reminded me a lot of like when r kelly used to wear that mask of zorro shit on his face like back when he was doing those videos like step in the name of love and the countless other videos that you know around the early 2000s. It reminded me of R. Kelly wearing those masks. Or it could be like a Ninja Turtle, like, like a Zorro mask. It reminded me of that, and I'm just thinking to myself, that's weird. Because this is late 2006 and stuff like that, especially in New York City, that's very uncommon. Today, you know, you could go out wearing a, a freaking thong on only, and you know, that's considered normal. This is the day and age we live in. So, I'm just like, hey, you know what, whatever. I decide to to take a seat. The seat that I see that it's available because none of the seats were available. It was, you know, occupied. One person gets off. I see that there's a seat available. I go across the car to take a seat because I just want to sit down, you know, until my stop comes. Well, with every stop, I notice that this kid, you know, he's coming closer and closer until he's standing above me and um for some reason i'm just you know whatever i'm just listening to music i think i don't know if i had anything but i'm just being myself i'm not really noticing anything but i kind of feel like a pair of eyes like staring down upon me but every time i look up he's looking away and it seems like his head moves and i gotta let my little dog out because she likes to come in and out of the room and it's kind of annoying but i love her but anyways, so 
I get off at my stop. And then as I get off, I get out. I see that this kid, he gets off at the same stop. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, man, that's kind of weird, but whatever. Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe he has to get off the stop, too. So whatever. I go upstairs. I leave the train station. No, I start walking towards my house or whatever and I have a long way to go to walk well I power walk everywhere everybody pretty much power walks in New York City because you know we always have some place to go and I'm trying to get the hell home because I want to get home I just want to watch MTV BET play on my PlayStation 2 I just want to do that and that's it but I noticed that the guy or the kid he's following me too and you know I'm taking turns and whatnot because that's just the way I have to go. And he's doing the same thing. He's he's making turns and he's power walking. He's trying to keep up with me. So at this point, I'm just like, all right, this guy is trying to do something to me. This, this dude, he's probably going to try to rob me or something. Well, I'm on to him and I'm ready for it. So in my head, I'm just like, you know what? I'm ready to kick ass because I'm a stupid 17 year old. And you know what? I've been in my fair share of fights by then. And all I have armed on me is a pen. For when I doodle on, you know, my notebooks, because I did a lot of doodling. I doodle on my notebooks. I doodle on the desks at school. I doodle on sometimes the, the, the seats on the train because I was kind of a vandal back then. You know, I buy a pack of cheese doodles and I doodle on that. <laughs> no. But, you know, I had a pen on me. And it's just a regular pen. So I'm just thinking to myself, you know what? If anything happens, I'm going to use this pen as a weapon. And then I just slip it into my sleeve from my pocket in my sleeve, you know, so I could just take it out, you know, Assassin's Creed style. And I'm not familiar with that game because I never really played it. People around me have played it. I never played it. I don't know what the dude's name is. What, Ezio? Yeah, so I have it in my sleeve, just ready to just pull it out and just jab him with it just in case. And I don't go my normal route. I take a detour because I want to confirm. And why is my dog barking? I want to confirm that this guy is actually trying to do something because he's really following. So I go down a block, which is like more secluded. And that's the stupidest thing that you could do ever. If you're being followed is to go to a place that's secluded. But my plan was, all right, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to be like, what's up? What do you want? And so my thing was that I should first tend to my dog first off. Oh, hold up. My thing was that I'm going to catch this dude off guard. And I'm going to fight him and whatever happens, I'm going to pull out that pen and I'm going to jab him with that pen. Because I'm feeling like a badass and I'm not taking shit from anybody. I was like that at that age because, you know, whatever. I grew to not take shit from people. But I did something stupid, which was go down a block, which was secluded, thinking that I'm going to get the edge off. I go down the block and he's, sure enough, he's right there. But then I had enough. I just turn around and, I, and this is what I said. I was like, yo, what's up with you? And then he just stands there. I'm like, yo, what's good with you? Like, what's up? Like, you've been following me since the train station and I've been making turns and I came down here. I knew you was following me for a minute. What's good with you? What's the problem? Like, you got a problem with me? What, what you want to do? And then he says, nah, bro, nah, nah. I ain't trying to do nothing like that. I know that it's kind of weird, bro. I know I'm following you and stuff like that, but I ain't trying to do nothing to you. I ain't trying to rob you. I ain't trying to do no nothing bad to you. I just wanted to tell you that I think you mad cute, bro. And then I'm just like, that caught me off guard. I'm just like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, yeah, man, I'm not. I just thought that you was mad cute and I just want to holler at you, man, because you, you, you so cute. And then I'm just like, you need to explain it like and he he just tells me that you know what he saw me and that he wanted to take a chance to to talk to me to to get to know me and as i'm hearing him i'm just like this is not what i wanted i was expecting something else i was expecting a fight but you know what i'm glad that there's no fight there's no confrontation but i'm still in a weird position 
And then he just tells me, he just, the dude literally asks me out. He asked me for my number, my name. I gave him a fake name, but I said, I'm not giving you my number, dude. I understand that, all right, you think I'm cute, whatever, but I'm going to tell you off the bat, I don't go that way. I'm, I'm straight. I like women. You know, sorry, dude, but that's that's just what it is, man. So you're barking at the wrong tree. And then he's kind of getting like a little insistent. He's just like, nah, but you know, you got to understand that you cute. I find you mad cute. Like, I don't know. And I'm just like, bro, I understand. But, you know, this is not going to happen. I'm, I'm straight, dude. I'm not gay. And it's okay that you're gay, man. I don't got a problem with you being gay. He was kind of very, he was very insistent. But I just, you know what? Let me extend the hand of peace to show that, you know what? I'm not being confrontational. No, thank you, but you know what, bro, and it, thank you for admitting that, whatever, you, I give you respect for that much, but I'm not gay, so I give him the daps, like the, the pound, the handshake, like, hey, you know what, it's all cool, but as I do that, he wiggles his middle finger in the palm of my hand, and then I just snatch my hand away, I was like, alright, see, you see what you did there, he's like, what, so he's kind of gaslighting, I'm just like, you see what you did there, I just told you mad times that I'm not gay and I was mad respectful towards you and now you disrespecting me. He's like, oh, how am I disrespecting you? I'm like, you just did the shit with, with your finger. And then he goes, well, how do you know you ain't gay? Like, you, you never tried it? And I was like, bro, I never tried dipping my balls in acid, but I never, <laughs> I said something like that. And I was like, but I'll never, I never tried that, but it doesn't mean that I want to do it ever in my life and then he's just like oh come on bro, bro, bro come on i'm like yo bro i already told you no and you were disrespecting me with that shit i try to be peaceful and you disrespecting me and then he's like but you know come on but i always get what i want though and i'm just like well you know what today is the day that you didn't get what you want because i done told you that and you getting me fucking tight right now bro so this is what's gonna happen because you've been disrespectful i'm gonna let you go I'm gonna go up the block because I need to go home and I know you gotta go up the block because you're not from around here dude I know you're not from around here so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna both go up this block and when we get to the corner you better be on your way because I'm gonna go where I gotta go and you better be on your way you better go back to that train station bro and he's like oh really for real and I'm like for real dude because I'm not playing this shit with you I was respectful, you was coming out all creepy and shit following me, I confronted you, I said what's up, you told me you was real, you was, you know, whatever, but now you disrespecting me, I told you no, you keep disrespecting me bro, I told you no so many times, I'm getting tight with you, I don't want any shit with you, but some shit's gonna go down if you don't fucking leave me the fuck alone, so you need to get the fuck out of here, be on your way. And he's like, aye, man, man, aye, aye, aye. So then I get off, you know, I go to the corner. I'm like, aye, man. And let me tell you something. If you ever see me again on the train, I swear, bro, don't come up to me. Walk the other way. When you see me, walk the other way, bro. All right, because I'm not playing this shit. Next time you see me, you walk the other way. You don't come up to me, nothing like that. I don't want it. I don't want nothing to do with you. He's like, aye, aye, man, aye, aye, I see you, I see you. I'm like, yeah, aye. So I see him walk the other way, and he kind of blows me a kiss, and I'm just like, yeah, fuck you too. But I don't say that to him, because if I said fuck you, then he'll get excited. Because I get excited when a woman says fuck you to me, so. But anyways, <laughs> whatever, he goes on his way, and I go on my way. But somehow, some way, I knew that because of my little encounter with him right there, I knew that he was going to be following. So I'm just like, I feel that he's around. I feel his presence. It's like we got a vibe, you know? It's like I could feel his chakra or some bullshit. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm not going to go straight home. I'm going to take a lot of detours. I'm going to have this guy fucking going around the place. I want to see how fucking far is he going to take this shit. Because I know he's following me. And I don't want him to see where I live. So I take a couple of detours, I walk around a few uh, streets and whatnot. You know, I go into a store, come out, and then I pass by my house. And I don't go inside, because it's like, I know he's following me. 
So I pass by and I acted like I don't live there. I just pass by, you know, I'm walking. So I walk down another avenue and then I walk down the street. Now I'm familiar with the entire area, so whatever. He's not. But I know that he was following me. So as I'm walking down the street, I sense his presence. And then I look across because every time I look, I feel like something moves across the street. And it turns out that I caught him right at the moment. He ducks behind a car, like a parked car. He's been doing that for the last 20 minutes as I've been walking. He's been going behind cars, jumping out of the car, following me. He's been doing that for 20 minutes, going behind trees, just, just making himself really unknown. That's why I call him the gay ninja. So when I see him duck, he knows that he's been caught Metal Gear Solid style. I have a huge exclamation point on the top of my head. And then I remember verbatim what I yelled out. And this, however, I remember I said verbatim. I yelled out, yo, I see you from behind the car. Get the fuck out from behind the car. Stop fucking following me. Stop fucking following me or some shit gonna pop off between you and I. And you know what? I'm gonna fuck you up, bro. Seriously, real talk, I'm gonna fuck your fucking shit up. And then, um... He jumps out from behind the car and then he says this in reply. I love you. Not joking. He says that. And then he's fixing his little mask of uh, Zoro type shit. And then he ran away. He ran away like Daffy Duck. Like, woo, 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 woo. You know, he ran away. He ran away from my life. And I've never seen that guy again, ever again. That kind of got me pissed because at the time I wasn't used to shit like that. More so being approached by another guy. I didn't know how to handle that. But I was really extremely angry. Because I, I kind of took it as offense at the time. What he asked me was like, oh, how do you know you're not gay if you haven't tried it? <laughs> so you know where I'm going with this. Because I'm questioning myself what gave him the reason for him to come up to me and tell me all of this stuff and for me to go through all of this shit does that mean that i'm gay and maybe he knows something that i don't does he have like gaydar does he you know did he send something for me do i give off some vibe and some shit those questions entered my head when i got home i finally got home i made sure the coast was clear the guy was long gone he ran away i'm fuming i'm i'm fucking fuming because of this event but more so is because I'm thinking that, yo, maybe he knows something that I don't. Maybe I am gay. And I start panicking because I'm an idiot 17 year old. Well, I'm almost going to be 17. I'm an idiot teenager. And at that time, you know, the whole gay and whatever, that was still not as accepted as it was as it is today. But this was my mindset back then. So like the smartest human being in the world that I was at that time, I decided to put myself to the test to see whether or not I am. Because evidently, it must mean something when a guy approaches you and um, he's persistent. So in my head, I thought that. So what I did was I grabbed my mother's laptop and I knew something about computers here and there. I'm not smart, but I took my mother's laptop and at the time, Wi-Fi was fairly new. Not everybody had Wi-Fi. And the people that did have Wi-Fi, they didn't put passwords on their Wi-Fi. So anybody could just join in and whatever, if they had the, you know, if they had enough, like, reception from it. So there was a place that I used to go. I used to go to the windowsill around that place in my, you know, in my house, in my apartment. So I took my mom's laptop and I sat by the windowsill to get, you know, whatever Wi-Fi. Because that's what I used to do when I had to update my MySpace page back then. So I go to the internet on my mom's laptop and then I do a search for gay porn and then I click a video and it was just a clip of you know two guys doing it and it was like from a movie and then from what I remember it was like two guys they were like oh I will be a drill sergeant Ooh, okay and then it cuts right to the action now for that moment of me watching the action I'm not happy I'm cringing, I'm, I can't even fucking look because it's weird to me and it's not doing anything for me. I'm just forcing myself to just look at it just to try to see, you know, maybe 
that guy was right. Maybe he saw something in me. Maybe I am, you know, and I don't know it. So I'm gonna put myself to the test because I'm such an intelligent person, right? But I'm, I'm just like weirded out by the whole thing and I, I'm not, it's not doing anything for me and I'm grossed out. But then I see the next video and it's just women, it's lesbians. So I click that and automatically I knew as soon as I clicked that and those women got to the action, just like that, no, I, I'm straight, uh, I'm very straight, because it did something for me. But I don't stay intrigued too long because it's like, you know what, somebody could go in the house, so I just log off the, you know, the web browser, not before I clear the history, because I knew how to clear history, because I have a cousin that was tech savvy, it still is tech savvy, and he taught me how to clear the history on the web browser. So I remember the steps and I cleared that history because I'm such a double O agent. And I do that and then I shut off my mom's laptop and I put it back. So that was confirmed for me that, you know, I'm not gay. I, I'm just, whatever. But I feel very weird about everything and I'm thinking like, why did he approach me? At that time I had, um, my hair was like in an afro kind of, it was curly in the afro. Now, I was always used to having my hair like a Caesar. I always had a Caesar cut when I was younger, but sometimes I would grow out my hair, very few. Not like today, but back then that was rare for me to have my hair grown out. My hair was grown out at that time, at that brief period. So I head on to the barber shop and I decide to get a haircut completely. Give me a Caesar, but this time I have a design on my head, like a design on my hair, you know, whatever. And that shit was kind of cool, but I felt insecure about that because I just did that at a whim. I didn't think about it. But I thought that, you know, that meant it was going to give me the wrong attention. And this whole time, I'm thinking, like, why couldn't it have been a sexy girl? And out of all people, that guy. And it is what it is. But, you know, people liked my new hair when I got back to school. But that was like a weird experience. And um, furthermore, I had a perception of gay people after that. For a little while until I went to college and I realized that you know what they're just as cool they're just as shitty as everybody else so um, that's another thing that I could take away from that but it's been a story that I could tell and people would laugh and laugh and whatnot and that wouldn't be the last time I'd be accosted or you know I'd be I guess approached by another guy but I take it in good humor now as long as everybody's respectful and I, I take it as a form of flattery because now the way I think is like, hey, if I'm good looking to a guy and guy, us guys, we're visual creatures, we, we like things that look good, then I'm going to be looking good to a woman too. And who knows better than what looks good than a gay guy, but I'm not gay and I have no problem with gay people, but that's just my funny story of the time I got stalked by a gay ninja. I have more stories, like I said, of me being accosted, but not by that guy. I've never seen that guy since, and I don't want to jinx it, so I don't ever want to see you again, dude, because no, and um, I'm pretty sure that <laughs> whoever that guy is, I'd always be the guy on his mind. I'd always be that one kid that got away that he could not have. The booty is mine. It belongs to me. You can't have my booty. You know, if this was the case, I'd be top. I'm just saying. <laughs> All, right. All right, that's enough. But thank you for listening to my stupid story about me being stalked by a gay ninja. I appreciate it. I'm Baron of Anarchy. I hope I made you laugh by this weird encounter of mine because my life is weird. Thank you and have a good night.